Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for the 25th of March. This is our last one for the month. Just as a heads up, Thursday we will not be having a trade findings and adjustments as Friday is Good Friday. The market is closed and it really doesn't make that much of a sense to try to put a trade on on a low volume day going over uh, going over a three day holiday. So just some things to put out there for some <laughs> just throw some things out there for an interesting weekend. Today, I just want to go over some general things in regards to investing and just some things to pay attention to. I found this really interesting. It was given to me from one of you guys. And the comment was, apparently Goldman Sachs is about as certain as this year's market as I am. And the article, big tech companies could drive the S&P to 6,000 or crash it to 4,500, says Goldman Sachs. And you kind of want to know which one it is, right? Because we are almost dead set in the middle of both of those. If you were to look at where our market closed today, we are sitting at, oh, what is it? Uh, 5283-ish. So we're smack dab in the middle. Quick question, what does Goldman Sachs do if the market crashes to 4,500? or loses, I mean, that would be what, 15% of its value? What will Goldman Sachs um, have you do if that happens to their accounts? What do they tell you, anyone know? Buy bonds or take the loss. There you go, that's one of them. You know, and it's kind of funny, all the more reason to let them invest for you. Interesting comment, right? But what are they really gonna tell you to do? They're probably not gonna tell you to buy bonds, because they've already got you in that at the beginning of the year for their uh, their commissions. There you go. Yeah, they're going to say, write it out. You're diversified, which is interesting because none of that helped out in 2008, 2010. Our little stealth 2020 20% loss. It didn't help out anyone. But the usual comment is, sit there and take the pain. Not the best thing to hear when you're investing in, in the stock market. And it's interesting because I want to tell you, in my opinion, and I'm just going to throw this in here, in my opinion, money managers put you into a diversified fund because they can't or won't do the work themselves. And obviously, it's not like doing the work guarantees you a return in the market. But there are some things that I think are rather important that maybe is something that we should be paying attention to. What do you mean you guys can't see the charts? Am I doing stuff? You guys can't see any of this. Someone needs to tell me, hey, you should probably show me this. So why don't I go over a couple of these with you again? I just went through these and none of you guys could see this. All right. Uh, I first talked about Apple. We did a great job of protecting from 195 down to 180. Then from 190 down to 175. Apple was a great run on the downside for us for protection. It's doing the work. Yes, we lined up on the Apple shares closer to 198. We will do so again in the future if we run ourselves back up there. I talked about Meta. 
fact that some of this, I heard people say, my goodness, you ran a lot of that without protection. You've got to remember, it doesn't help you to put a bearish position on a bullish moving stock. For those of us that couldn't afford Meta, I know everyone has some option strategies in their account. And their option strategies for Meta have 50, 60, or $70 spreads to make money in it. What a great opportunity we did by doing the work and finding what Meta would look like it was going to go to. Square. Again, some of you are for crying out loud, Kevin, you can't put me in square. What a nice run we had in square from 80 down to 62. Yes, it was below 62 at times, but what a great run, added shares, back up to 82. Square has the opportunity to get significantly higher. And this is what we spent our time doing during the Christmas break. Running, again, 1,400 or 1,000, between 1,200 and 1,400 different stocks we went through to create that beginning of the year spreadsheet in Excel on where our stocks could go. What's the next one I showed you guys? Micron. An amazing run Micron Cron has had for those that are in Micron. The interesting thing is, if you look at the chart, 80 to 90, 90 back down to 80 or 79.15. There were some of you a little while ago that were giving me some serious crap. Kevin, it's not the next Apple. It's It's got problems. It's got this. You've heard me say, no, It's it's got 10 billion roughly coming to it that still hasn't been announced publicly. What an amazing run we have in Micron. Disney. The woke stock of the woke stocks, but they're getting rid of some of those people. They're not putting out movies that have had problems. There were a lot of you that said at $88 down there, it was time to get out of Disney. The numbers said otherwise. The numbers said, no, we need to stay in Disney. And because of that, we did. And pretty neat that, uh, thank goodness we did, to say the least, because it went from 88.68 up to 119. It's a 35.22% return year to date. What an awesome return we have in Disney. And I know some of you are just going, Kevin, you're an idiot, but the numbers and the work that we did said otherwise. Anyone remember where we think Disney can get to year to date? <laughs> I think we're in that 160 range. Obviously we can get back up to to uh, 200, but 160, another $40 from here is very realistic for Disney. And we hope it'll keep getting there. All right, what was my next one I put in here? Baidu. We understand when this chart looks like this, how difficult it might be to stay in a stock. We find it interesting. People are like, ah, Baidu's never going to move. Last time they said that, it went up to 380. Finally breaking the 50-day, I asked you the question a minute ago, where can Baidu get to? Usually it's up to the 200-day at 122. Might stop at 120 but we have a pretty quick 15% run higher on Baidu. Its numbers are always good, and Apple now needs Baidu to put their AI into their phones so they can be more competitive in selling phones in China. 
Here's one of my favorites. People are like, oh my gosh, Kevin. Under Armour, really? You got to be kidding me. Looking at that chart, what were the highs for the year? The highs for the year, I, you might not be able to see it. It's sitting up there at $9.08. We'll say $9 for round numbers. Under Armour's doing a lot right to get themselves back in track. Unfortunately, they are getting rid of a CEO, and I believe she is probably asked to leave. But a run back up to $9 is a 22% return on Under Armour. This is how you beat the market. You've got to put the work in to be able to beat the, I don't know where it goes. It might go to six, it might go to 45. We're just going to stick in a bunch of funds. And you know what the funny part is? If it goes up to 6,000 or 65 down the road, does your portfolio grow that much in a standard growth model portfolio? Would your portfolio represent the returns of the S&P 500? I kind of am asking, but I want to know why. Because most of you are going to say, of course not. But why won't a growth model portfolio, a 60-40, represent the growth running up to 6,000 from 52.83 right now? Basically, Goldman Sachs is saying, hey, we're going to run up to, we're going to run up to, uh, we're going to run another 12.5%. Quiet today, huh? You can't reach those returns if 40% of your portfolio is sitting in a bond. Year to date, I'm pretty sure we're up like 7.8% return. But 40% of the portfolio is locked into a 5% return or less because of bonds. Well, bonds are safe. It goes out a guaranteed return. Unless you got into a really, really 1%, 1.5% bond fund, and you're stuck in it now where it's lost so much of its value. To be honest with you, Hurley Investments doesn't know any better than anyone else where our stock market's going to. But what we do know, and what we've known for a while, the market will probably pop on some interest rate cuts. Those cuts are probably going to happen July, September, October in an election year, which means you really can't go away, sell in May and go away, if you want to get the benefit of some rate cuts. The beauty of having that long put is when the market doesn't know its numbers, you can keep going in a position because you can make up some of that downward movement. Dow Jones Industry Average is bullish right now. Same thing with the S&P, which is interesting because I thought the S&P would be lower last week. Missed that one completely. It was anything but lower. In fact, it was almost up 2%. And the NASDAQ is still bullish. The interesting part, we see some consolidation or building of the base. So yes, if you were to ask me, are we probably going to go higher? I would think so. 
Heck, we've just gone higher for for what? Five months? And there's nothing yet in the trend that says we're going to do anything but continue in this trend. So while some of you have said, oh, you've got no protection on, we have it on, we take it off, we're actively managing. But again, you don't add protection in bullish moving markets. You can't make money if you keep doing that. All right, let's see here. What else do I have for you? Where are we going to end March? I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to change it from down to to up to. Earnings, we have GameStop tomorrow. That'll be an interesting one. I believe GameStop is like a $14 stock right now. And it moved 10% today. So that'll be a really interesting one to watch. I'm going to my ticker symbol. Um, GameStop. Uh, $15.38. It was up $14. Well, it was up $2 today. So it was at $13.12 before its earnings tomorrow. Um, Fuller Homes. Uh, Wall, what is it? Walgreens Boot Alliance on Thursday. Tomorrow, we have some important durable goods. And then on Thursday, which will be a low volume day, we have the GDP. Everything seems to be running pretty good. So as long as the GDP comes in line and the in line is expected to be a 3.2 down from the 5.5. If we're 3.1 to 3.3 or 3.4, it'll be low volume and we might have a nice spike on Thursday before we have a three day weekend. Um, am I looking to trade? Letting stocks run as the trend is bullish. I've got some interesting articles here. Billionaire investor to back Donald Trump in 2024. It's funny because he doesn't necessarily like him, but he's giving money because they want to see the government run more like a business. Boeing CEO steps down. And this is interesting. The stock took a nice bump today higher on Boeing but he's still gonna be in till the end of 2024. And they're doing this changeover. It's like, eh, nothing's changing yet. And it's too early to give Boeing a big bump higher, but all the mistakes have been made. I put an interesting video in here. If you wanna watch the video, just click on this video from CNBC and they'll talk about it. DeSanto signed an immigration bill that will keep immigrants out of Florida. Pretty interesting because it sounds like um, in some states, they're going to let some illegal uh, immigrants vote. They sign a 131 something something form. Uh, I do think that's awful, especially to all those who have entered the country legally. I can't believe that they would let people enter illegally that way. But uh, DeSantis is signing a bill that you have to have ID. And if you're caught uh, without a driver's license, you're going up to 60 days in jail. And you can be deported out of the state of Florida. Some people asked about last Tuesday's inflation rating. I guess it was two weeks ago. So I had to go back and show why the CPI was so important. I had that article in here so that you guys can read that about inflation. And I also have a video about how Apple reportedly is in talks with Baidu for their artificial intelligence for their devices. In all honesty, it's a really slow week this week. Not much should be happening. And the neat thing is a lot of what we're in 
is moving contrary to the market. So if it's a down day, a lot of our positions are moving up, especially some of our core holdings. So with that said, uh, what questions do you guys have for me today? It's kind of a smaller group. What questions do you guys have for me today? Oh, and yes. So um, someone asked, how do we decide what we keep putting people into? And really, it comes up to your own individual's portfolios. As we find new positions, we've rotated some people out of Apple into Micron. Um, if you had some cash on hand, we moved you into, well, everyone has some meta spreads, but we might have moved you into some square or, or so forth. So the short answer is we, we look at each individual portfolio, cash on hand, and we're doing the best we can to rotate you to make sure you have a more balanced portfolio. Um, some people went into Micron, some people went into MRO. MRO has had a pr pretty good move. MRO also is about a 20% move up. So if you're looking at, you know, Micron and going, ah, I'm not in that one, Pretty good to come off of the uh, $22.5 mark down there. We're now sitting at $27.5. So we had a $5 move on some of you that got in at $22.50, and then some of you got in right as it got above the 50-day at probably $23.60-ish or so. So for the e question that's emailed to me, how do you decide? We look at each individual portfolio and we decide individually on what you have in store, what money you have on hand, and where we can maybe exit some positions and put you into some new ones. So we're not doing as a mass, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Each portfolio is looked at individually. We made some of these decisions at the beginning of the year. Guys, thanks for being here. Have a wonderful Easter. Enjoy Good Friday. That is a federal holiday. We will uh, we will be canceling the Thursday trade findings and adjustments. It's just not a great time to be putting anything else back in. And, and it looks like that's it. All right, guys. Hey. Have a wonderful evening. Hopefully you guys are hearing me because you've been a very quiet group today. But have a great evening. Next time if the charts aren't moving, make sure you let me know. And we'll, we'll do a better job of making sure you can see the screen. Enjoy your three-day weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next Monday. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>